state of Israel was founded on pure lies. It was never about a homeland for the Jewish people. Israel was just the launching pad for the continuation of the Nazi state. The party that founded Israel is the same one that was formed when Hitler's Nationalist Socialist Party, the NA, signed a pact with the Zionist International, the ZI. And together, these two entities created the Nazi Party in 1923. In fact, the Jews of what is now Israel in many cases were survivors of the victims of Zionist soldiers in Hitler's SS. More than one third of the SS was of Jewish extraction, according to German records. The ZI was responsible for the Nazi campaign against the Jews. This was necessary to create the get out of jail forever card that was to be needed to garner support after the war for the plight of the Jewish people. But Zionists are not Jewish by nature. A Zionist can be a member of any religion. The Jewish connection was primarily created as the cover story that was needed to create the lock to the biblical justification for the existence of Israel in 1948 when this whole false flag operation was sold to the United States for ratification. What the world does not seem to know is that this pact between Hitler and the Zionist International was signed long before Hitler had become a major player in German politics. But that was the real reason that the only other flag to legally fly over Nazi Germany was the blue and white star of David. Lies, deception and global hatreds are what the German Nazis were and still are all about under Hitler. This fact explains how the Israelis could treat the Palestinians as they have since they first attacked Palestine in 1948. This treatment of innocent Palestinians by the occupying Israeli forces makes the Nazis of World War II look like mere school children. And the current Israeli behavior in Gaza has no contemporary equal for raw brutality, mindless murder and unending torture as those policies continue today under Bibi Netanyahu, the current butcher of Palestine. After Hitler's armies were defeated, the real Nazis of today continued with their war upon humanity from Israel. So now the world can see that nothing which was promised to anyone by Israel under its globalist agenda was ever true. The Jews and the Christians as well as the Muslims inside Israel are all treated with the scorn and hatred represented in the continuing slaughter of babies, of children and the civilian population in the name of creating a safer Israel. Because the supposed homeland for the Jews that Israel was supposed to be is a dictatorship, not a democracy. Israel today is nothing less than a barbaric, apartheid Zionist state, totally controlled by the Nazi party of 2011. And now, Israel is demanding the surrender of the entire world to pacify their unending cravings for total power and control. Here is Israel's latest demand as a minimum requirement for their continued existence. Please note, on the map, the number of countries that are in today's headlines are totally enmeshed in the destabilizing wars that are currently still raging throughout the Middle East, including Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, a tiny portion of Iran, half of Kuwait, and about a third of Saudi Arabia, a major portion of Egypt, which includes the Suez Canal and about half the Red Sea, plus Jordan and all of Palestine. Is it any wonder that there can be no peace in the Middle East or the world as long as Israel remains unsatisfied? Today's demand from Bibi is, speaking at Soroka Hospital, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu declared that the PRC leaders slain in the bombing attack on the Gaza city of Rafah 
were responsible for the attacks inside southern Israel. He also said that they were only the beginning. We have a policy of extracting a very high price from anyone who causes us harm, insisted Netanyahu, who thanked the military and Shin Bet for wiping out the leaders of the Popular Resistance Committee, the PRC, in the attack. The PRC has denied responsibility for the attacks. This leaves the question of what retaliation is possible if, as Netanyahu put it, those who gave the order to murder our citizens while hiding in Gaza are no longer among the living. He gave no indications who else would be bombed. Defense Minister Ehud Barak, however, hinted that it might be the Gaza Strip in general, commenting yesterday that if there will be a need, the strikes will intensify. Since yesterday's Gaza bombings, a number of rockets have been fired from the Strip, injuring six Israelis when one of them hit a religious school. Most of the rockets landed in empty fields. It is way past time that Israel and its global fantasies were ended. The people of the world need to rise up against this barbaric and murderous state and end its ability to do anything anymore. The self-declared American Zionists here ought to be held for court in The Hague. This would include, but would not be limited to, Joe Biden, Obama, Hillary Clinton and George Bush, as well as Cheney. No American forces or weapons ought to be used against the Palestinians this time. If other outside forces were to attack Israel over this issue, there are several nations that have both the military power to crush Israel and the will to do it. And if Israel had to fight for its own life, instead of looking to the USA for protection, they would lose that kind of battle in a heartbeat. This might sound ridiculous, but listen to what this video follows a link and ask yourself who really wants to start World War III. Understand this. History is about to repeat itself. The United States government got out of the Wall Street created crash of 1907 by getting into World War I. The United States government got out of the Wall Street created crash of 1929 by getting into World War II. The United States government is preparing to get out of the Wall Street crash of 2008 by getting into World War III. Ah, but in this version of the global mistake, it is the United States that is the initiator and aggressor. Germany was smart enough to refuse the role this time round. And since the end of the 19th century, every major war has been lost by the nation that started it. The world's people need to rise as one people, opposed to the insanity of Israeli demands and end the intimidating false power of the Zionists worldwide forever. Zionists in every place where they have inserted themselves must be located and driven out, their properties and wealth seized for a global fund to rebuild what they have so utterly destroyed. The survivors could return to wherever they originally came from and attempt to find either surcease or prosecution there. But Zionism must be erased from history and all of its works, along with their temples to money internationally that must be liquidated. Once this outlawed system is smashed, the fake debt will disappear back into cyberspace and those responsible for it can be tried and punished. The world of today can no longer tolerate these madmen or any of their plans for our future. The true history of all these global wars was initiated through the Zionist control banks that funded both World War I and World War II. Israel should be removed from the global chessboard before they can be allowed to start World War III. Sun Tzu said, We must operate from a strong sense of moral justification that even the threat of death will not deter you from your course. For a nation to have this moral strength and resolution, the government must have the support of the people. Leaders who would wage war without this strong moral justification and who do not have the wholehearted support of the people will find their own power bases quickly crumbling. This 
has been the one forever truth that will define what is about to happen to the planet. And America, despite her reluctance thus far, finds herself in this exact position now, regarding our willingness to resist as we move to the edge of World War III. Barbarians cannot rule the world. They can only destroy everything they came into contact with. And Benjamin Netanyahu needs to come face to face with the global anger that his shitty little country has caused the world to suffer through. Our own people, that includes the 300 congressional outlaws that sign letters of undying support for whatever Israel chooses to do in the future, must be among those rounded up as Zionists. This will tear at the very foundations of this nation. But if we do not do this now, there may never be another chance to bring down these monsters we have so thoroughly embraced since long before 1948.